Hey everybody, this is Jeremy with ZTP Mag. I'm here with Aaron Nordstrom of Gemini Syndrome. How you doing, Aaron? Doing all right. Let me get my uh, cord there. <laughs> so you guys just had one epic uh, sound test. Um, I, I've been at plenty of sound checks, and uh, usually you don't get two songs, and, full songs, and, and I enjoyed that thoroughly. How, how do you think you sounded? Uh, hopefully good. <laughs> I was just uh, doing the thing. I don't know. It was cool. You got you got to walk around, and uh, I, I've never seen it do with an iPad. You know, changing the sound. I, I'm a little bit behind the times or whatnot, but uh, you and uh, Alessandro got to come out and just move around a little bit and see what it sounds like from our perspective. Yeah, and that's it's not that doesn't happen every day by any means. Um, whether it's the venue and the the schedule today, who knows? But uh, yeah, very rarely do we get two songs. If we usually even on a support tour like this, we won't even get a sound check. Um, really? Yeah, usually it's just the headliner. and then That's we'll, crazy. We'll set up, we'll line check, make sure everything works, but that's it. You know, we, Doors are a little later today. so. Right. Uh, and the Avatar camp is very cool, very nice, and yeah. uh, take care of us. So, um, But yeah, to get to come out in front of house and like listen to it from the crowd perspective is, is cool, because I wear in-ears, so I've got everything kind of like very much in my head. Right. And uh, I didn't use them for sound check today, yeah. which is also weird, not hearing myself like right there. So... Uh, but it's cool to hear the boom of, of the entire, the oh, entire the, production. The drum kit, man. Yeah. He gets going on that. Yeah, man. So, I, you know, I've always been curious with, with the in-ears. Like, how much how much of the crowd do you hear? Is it tone it down quite a bit? Uh, you need to, I mean, they're noise canceling. You okay. Know? So, like, you're hearing your mix and what you're getting. So whether whatever you put in there, whether it be guitars or drums or vocals <clears> or whatever, um, I tend to pop one out so I can still hear them, hear them okay. too. Okay, yeah. Um, everybody's different and they make ones they make models that have like ambient microphones in them so you can turn those on and you can they actually mic the actual room so i don't have the uh, money for those right <laughs> but uh someday but yeah i'll pop it out so i can so i can still hear what's going on get a get a perspective because i grew up you know i didn't have in ears for a long time and as right. as we got a little older and um saved up our saved up our pennies you know for the nice right. the niceties well uh that's the that's the mark of um uh, a more mature band is uh, you have the in-ears you know the, the, the equipment that makes you sound more consistent each time you play so I mean I've, I've seen you twice before and every time you guys are right on the mark and uh, that's that's phenomenal I'll tell you what though there's dudes that that swear by them and there's dudes that absolutely don't yeah I know some guys out there I know uh, like Ivan and Elias don't use them they really? like Ivan is absolutely the rest of the band uses it but he prefers stage monitors everybody's different everybody has their preference uh, Ivan is uh, he he I think I don't think I've seen somebody feed off a crowd quite like he feeds off a crowd I've known Ivan a long time man. that guy is an incredible performer yeah there's no no doubt about it oh yeah so uh, you've got Eternity coming out. Um, tell us about the uh, new al or new song, new album. Uh, that's the first off the new record. I uh, just released it last month. So um, in a short couple sentences, it's a, it's a song about, I guess, realizing your time here is limited and trying to appreciate that. Right. I've been uh, definitely conscious of my mortality lately. The older I get, and realizing that it's. Not I was gonna say, is it is it a specific thing that made you no, feel like that? No, 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 not nothing particular. Just getting older, man, and just realizing, you know, it, the thought occurred to me that I was, I am the age that my stepdad was when he met me, when I met him, you know, and like putting myself in that perspective. I don't have any kids or anything, you know. Right. And just putting myself in the perspective of his shoes and be like, he was an adult. He passed when he was pretty young. Like, going on that on that time frame, like, rides almost over. Right. You know what I'm saying. And that's not to say it is for me, but just the reality sets in that you can go at any time, man. This right. isn't a forever thing, and uh, you got to use your your time wisely and do what do what you want to do with it, you know. And just being conscious of that. Um, this whole album is is about a lot of that. Is about just realizing your mortality and and embracing the fact that you do have a life. You know, right. you are experiencing this and you are here doing it, whether it's awesome or total crap. Um. So yeah, I mean, just trying to, to keep that in a, in a, a mental focal point to appreciate it. You know, it's not always easy, but right. Um, when I was first sent your CD before it came out, one of the first, I mean, 
and I think most of your fans would agree, that, uh, Center Nation, everybody, you guys, your your vocals and your lyrics are, they set you apart from other bands. Um, you write from a place that's a little bit more personal than some bands. Um, where does that come from for you? I mean, directly from my experiences. You know, I've always I've always written like that. I've always been drawn towards bands that write like that. Um, as long as I can remember, music has been you know a therapy of sorts. Right. You know, when I went through hardship or loss or whatever it might be, and um, not only from bands that I listen to, but you know, playing my own music, writing my own music is is a matter, a form of therapy for me to get those kind of things out and get them on the table and. As time has gone on, it's resonated with people, and right. it's it's given them uh, whatever you want to call it, whether it be hope or, or insight or whatever, something, <laughs> something apparently positive. People tell me so. Uh, at the end of the day, man, I'm writing to get it off my chest and to try to understand it. Right. You know, like I said, this is a this is a finite existence, and uh, it's not an easy one. And I'm just trying, you know, every day is a, a battle to try to understand it and try to find my place in it and figure out what I'm here to do, if anything. You know, try to make it as positive an experience as I can. Cool. Hell yeah, man. Uh, another personal question. Um, can you tell me uh, who your influences were? Just, you know, who really touched you? It's a long list, man. Um, <laughs> top, I mean, top three? Musically, it's all over the board. I, I grew up playing classical piano and jazz piano and stuff, and my mom was into, like, uh, you know, she was always in musicals and singing at church and stuff, so I was all over the gospel and, and classical jazz. And then got into rock music when I was pretty young and got into hip-hop when I was young, so it's like electronic music, folk music, it's all over. Would you ever play piano on stage? Yeah, I think that'll probably happen eventually. Yeah? Yeah. I'd like to see that. Yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen eventually. I've done some keyboards on uh, on some of the tracks. All right. And uh, we, did a, we did a song on Lux that was never released that's just piano vocals, so maybe someday it'll come out. But, uh, well, now I'm really curious. Now I want to hear that. That seat out there now. I think you're the first person I really mentioned it to. But it's out there somewhere. You can't get your hands on it. But right. Maybe someday we'll release it. And I'd like to eventually explore that more. Like, we've done the acoustic stuff, and I play piano on that all the time. All right. So you can look that stuff up. Cool. Um, so... Uh, I, my friend Shelly's out there waiting on us, and uh, I didn't even realize it, but she happened to mention today is the s two year anniversary of Lux. Yeah, it sure is. So, how's that ride been for you? You guys have been, I mean, seriously, I, I don't think you might have had small little breaks, but you guys are always doing something. Yeah, I mean, just just these last six months we took off. Uh, we really haven't been, you know, we did Ship Rocked early this year, um, and then we did, you know, the last tour was Non Point. Right. end of last year and we've, this is the longest we've had off in five years you wow. know, up, up until recording Lux then recording Lux and then touring on Lux it was just five years of non-stop on the go and uh, this is the, you know, like I said, the longest we've had at home it was like what do we do with ourselves well I guess we'll write a record <laughs> so we wrote a record we appreciate that and uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of strange like you, you get the, the weird antsy kind of feeling of being home that long and, and kinda, I guess when you're in it you don't really know why and then it dawned on me, like, oh, yeah, I haven't been on tour in six months, and that's why. So now being back on it, it's like falling back into into routine, you know, getting used to it again. But uh, the ride was great, man. The fact that we're uh, able to do a second record, that people want to hear a second record, and people are coming to shows. And, and even in that hiatus, there was still a lot of communication between us and our fans, and people kept in touch with us and right. kept up on what we were doing and were interested in it. So that's, you know, really gratifying to know that people people care that it matters on any level yeah. to people that we do stuff you know what we do matters to anybody is awesome so um now you got uh, quite a few uh different different little fan groups on uh on facebook and everybody's real real passionate about you guys um and uh uh you guys have always um been pretty um pretty visible as far as uh you know talking to your fans uh especially with alejandro if you if you mentioned vapes <laughs> he's very happy about that yes babe yes so uh, go ahead. no i mean that's been it's one of the greatest parts about it you know yeah. without the fans we're just dudes playing music and like i said to be appreciated for for what we do in any in any level is uh you know more than a compliment 
Right. And that's absolute validation to keep doing it. And ultimately, I think the reason we do keep doing it, you know, touring isn't isn't glamorous and and like people think it is. And <laughs> yeah. uh, buses and vans and yeah, man, it's not like rest you know, stops. It's and not it's not rock star like people think what a rock star is or something. And um, <clears throat> being away from family and 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 all that that nonsense and the amenities and stuff is not for everybody. I love it. That's why I still do it. But, uh, you know, the fans being so passionate about it, you know, really at the end of the day, it carry us through even our dark times, you know, and the right. fact that people, I get emails and people coming up to me and telling me how much this song meant to them or this song or the album in general, or just our interactions with them have saved them from, you know, deep depressions or addictions or whatever it might be is, you know, that's, that's huge, dude. And that really leaves a mark on you and no, kind of gives, gives you a reminder like when I get down and I do I have my bad days man I don't wake up on the right side of the bed <laughs> like ever you know but it's a, it's a constant reminder that there is some good coming out of it right. you know, so it keeps us going um, so I uh, I pulled some fans and uh, did if you'd like me to ask a question um, sure. uh, one fan who is starting a band um they're pretty fresh if you had one piece of advice for a band that was just starting out what would you say play it's an old old dave mustaine quote play play and play some more yeah um and i remember reading that in a guitar world when i was a teenager somewhere and uh it's very true man in a, in a lot of levels too not only play and get good at what you do like music is a, is a craft and a trade you know right. it's an art form and you have to be <clears> good <throat> at it to succeed that, that's just you know what I mean? Like right. You have to be a good musician to succeed at music. Well, ideally. <laughs> There's probably some exceptions, but we won't, we won't get into <laughs> yeah, that. Won't. That's a whole different can of worms. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, play, and then play with other people. It's so important to play with other people. Because I know dudes, you know, I went to, like, college for music, a couple different colleges, and, mm -hmm. you know, you have virtuoso players who are in a room and locked in for 16 hours a day, and they, they're absolutely incredible musicians but don't have any chemistry with other people. Right, yeah. So it's two sides, important. Of, two sides of that coin. Play with everybody you can. And as far as being in a band, play out, play in front of people. You know, the only reason, or the only way that anyone's gonna have a reason to know who you are is if you give them that reason. Right. Is to be at shows and be playing shows and be in front of an audience. However small or large that audience is, it always starts small and grows. Yeah. So just play, play, and play. Was it important for you as a, uh, as a fresh band to get out and tour around your area and not just stay local or? Absolutely, yeah. Because you can, you can be your hometown hero and that's great. Right. But it's going to stop there. Yeah. You know, word of mouth has to spread, and that has to spread by you spreading. You know, and it's going to, you know, requires you playing to like nobody. Right. You know, we played shows in our in our in our early days, man. When we were on tour, just grassroots shows, where there was two people at that venue, and we played our show the same way we would any other any other venue with any other crowd. You right. Know, we always do that. But those pe those two people went and talked about you. And they still come back. Huh? You know, years later, they're still friends of ours. Right. So, it's it's, I mean, like massively important to to just get out of your comfort zone. One, you know, get away from, you know, your friends that are going to come to every show. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been in band since I was like fourteen years old. So, yeah, just you got to spread your own word. And it's easier now with, with, with the internet being what it is and, and how information is so accessible. Right. But that's only part of it. You can't lose the, the fundamental mm -hmm. physical aspect of being a band right. and being people playing music in front of other people that yeah. want to listen to music. You can't lose that. Right. I think uh, as easy as it's gotten to spread information, it's also gotten really easy to get buried that's under information. I couldn't have said it better. Um, absolutely. Absolutely true, dude. Like, yeah. how are you going to stick out you know, back in the back in the day, it was like you got told what was cool by the powers that be, right? And that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I mean, no. it does to an extent. Let's not let's not yeah, but undermine the conspiracy of it. You know, because it exists. I mean, right. definitely, there's people feeding the masses what they want to be fed yeah. or what they want to feed them. Um, but anybody can get a voice now, right? And that's for better or worse. Right. You know, that's how you got Justin Bieber. Anybody can get a voice. Yep. Kanye is going to run for president, so whatever. <laughs> oh, <God>. um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, I mean, to, to stick out and to stay in people's, you know, focus is, right. a, is a challenge nowadays, man, because there's so much. Cool. And people are so quick to, 
to click past. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, just like you guys, I'm always hunting for likes and trying to make connections and and, and friends and and all that. And uh, it's it's so hard to get people to like, share, you know, tweet. Yeah. All all those all those things are available, but it's really easy just to keep scrolling. So and, and the fact that because you know, like you just said, you're in the same boat. It's like oh, like and repost or like and share, and you see that everywhere now. So yeah. that's just commonplace. That's as right. commonplace as saying hi to somebody when you meet them at a place in the real world. You know, hey, hey, right. like, share, and repost. But how often do you do it? You know, and it really only takes a second. But it's harder than you think to get people to do that. Right. Oh yeah. And it, it, you know, shares and likes and all those kind of things. They mean the world to bands, uh, to ZTP Mag and things like that. Um, so, with that being said, where can people find you online? Gemini Syndrome dot com, uh, and that'll have links to everything else. Everything is Gemini Syndrome. So, the right. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. That that brings me to another question I had uh, <laughs> about um, a friend in a band. He was asking, you know, just advice and um, brand recognition. It's important to keep things the same across the board so you're always... You know, what do you think about that? I think it's very true. You know, again, with so much information, the simpler you can keep a concept, the easier it is to stick in the brain. Right. You know, if... You, if and it, it's not always easy, you know what I mean? Sometimes whatever your band name might be or whatever, for example, would... Uh, you know, it might be taken somewhere, whatever that band name might be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gemini Syndrome wasn't taken, so we have all that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty original. Uh, good for us, you know. Right. But if you're a band that doesn't have that, you know, then it has to be blah, blah, blah band or blah, blah, blah music. Right. Just even tacking on that last word is confusing right. to people for whatever reason, you know. It seems simple and kind of menial, but it's not. That stuff matters. And keeping it consistent across the board, if you're, you know, whatever you, whatever you choose to use, use it for everything, man. So people can just google you and find it right you know um so how much of this tour do you have left we're in we're in cincinnati right now at bogart's phenomenal venue um when's the last time you were here and then what you got next uh i don't think gemini syndrome's ever been here i could be wrong on that we've played a lot of shows in the last six years so (laughs) don't quote me on that i could be wrong we've been to cincinnati plenty of times um the last time I was here that I remember was with OTEP back in the day, back oh, wow. in like 2007. Um, like I said, I can't, I can't remember playing here with another band, but that's not to say we didn't. Um, we're about halfway done with this run. Cool. I think just over halfway with Avatar, and then we'll have another week and a half or so of uh, headline dates on the way back home. All right. That'll take us directly into the studio. So... You guys are still working on the record, so that that's a, that one song is just a teaser? Or? Yeah, I, we wanted to put something out, because it had been a minute. You right. Know? Uh, so that's what it is. Well, we're all anxious. Um, I, I'm sure since you guys are still working on it, there's not really a timeline. It's hard to put a timeline no, on no, creativity. No, I can give you a time. It's oh, all written. please. It's, thank you. <laughs> it's all written. Uh, that was this, this hiatus, was, right. was writing the record. So we have more than enough material for a record. Now it'll be just a matter. We'll probably write maybe one or two more before we actually hit the studio, just because we like to come overly prepared. Right. Uh, now it'll be a matter of taking stuff out, which is always a hard, hard right. thing to do. Um, but they can go in later for bonuses. And yeah, Easter yeah, yeah, eggs yeah, later. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really, we're shooting for early spring, early, early spring. next year for right. release date. I mean, we've got this. You know, the studio is booked. We're ready to go, ready to record. We've got a couple tracks done already so our foot our feet are in the water uh as soon as we can just we'll go in ready to work man so this will hopefully knock out pretty quick excellent well uh we this has been a great interview we've gone a little bit long so i'm not going to take up any more time um i really appreciate it man it was great talking to you and honestly i can't wait till you guys come out there and and, and rock the shit out of us <laughs> thanks for watching